Hello. I'm so glad to have these next few minutes with you to discuss a very important topic, happiness. I really hope you are happy right now. But to be honest with you, I think this is a struggle for many of us as Christians. It hasn't been for me in my life simply because I've been very, very blessed. But I have often wondered, as a dedicated follower of Christ, which I hope and I pray I am halfway, <laughs> I wonder, should I really be happy? Or should this Christian life be a struggle, filled with all kinds of problems and burdens? Because there are times I get so frustrated with a lot of Christian teaching and discussion, even many of our songs, because they're just filled with statements about all of our problems and all of our fears and all of our doubts and all of our confusions. And sometimes we almost could be led to think that that's what Christianity is supposed to be like. Just a life filled with burdens because we're following Jesus. Well, I've been thinking a lot more about happiness for this crazy happy series we're in. And I have realized I want more happiness, don't you? I mean, I've often said two common misconceptions about happiness that many of us have are Christians are to have joy. Everyone else can only have happiness. Or, God wants us to be holy, not necessarily happy. Well, I think many of us believe if we experience satisfaction from worldly things, it might be disobedience to Christ. But we saw in our first study on Sunday that it turns out that both of the statements that I just shared with you are totally wrong. Because you see, we have a God who's infinitely happy. And he wants his people to be happy in him, which means we're in a right relationship with God and we're living to glorify and enjoy him and bless people. But that doesn't mean we have to live an ascetic life, become monks that live in a monastery or nuns that live in a nunnery somewhere. So right here, I want to take just a few minutes and I want us to discuss two questions. The first one is this. What do you find yourself often putting in this fill-in-the-blank? I'd be happy if something occurs. The second question is, is there anything wrong with desiring that happiness? Since God wants us to be happy, we need to answer this question. How do we grow in happiness? And what I want to do is suggest 10 ways over our next three group meetings that I believe we can grow in happiness. The first step to that growth is we must stop living in our past. So you got fired. So the relationship ended. Oh, that church hurt you. Hey, I've been there and I've done that. And I know it stings. No, like it really stings. I know, I know, I know. But does it give any of us happiness to dwell on past events in our lives? Of course not. An author by the name of Joanna Weaver makes this very powerful statement. She said, bitterness is like us drinking the poison and then waiting for the other person to die. First of all, that's stupid. And second, it doesn't work that way. I mean, dwelling on what you can't change will only make it worse. Uh, before he trusted in Christ, the apostle Paul knew a lot of success but he also imprisoned and oversaw the murder of Christians. And so he writes in Philippians 3.13, But this one thing I do, you know, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, he said, I press toward that. So friend, whether your past haunts you or if you miss the good old days, <laughs> We must 
ask God for his grace to forget what's behind us and to help us be alive to what God has for us today and in all of our tomorrows. See, that's the only way to experience true happiness. So take the next few minutes and as a group, discuss this question. Do you tend to focus on your circumstances? and then explain it. Okay, to know true happiness, we must first stop living in our past. The second thing I would suggest is this. We must change our perspective. Much of happiness is about perspective. It's how we look at things and how we understand our situations. Until we understand what we truly deserve, we won't be happy with what we actually get. You see, understand something. God does not owe anyone success, favor, or even grace or mercy. He doesn't owe that to us, but all of these blessings are beautiful, undeserved gifts that God freely offers us if we can believe, if we can trust in Him and obey Him. However, we can often take them for granted and not be grateful for all God has waiting for us. So as we change our perspective, that's when we'll grow in true happiness. Now let's take some time to discuss this very important question. It's Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. In that portion, it lists the fruit of the Spirit. Think with me about these nine fruit, these nine things that come out of the Spirit being in control of our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These nine internal fruit of Christ's Spirit living in us are what produce real external happiness. Here's another question for your group to discuss right now. Which fruit of the Spirit do you feel is the hardest to find in your own life? All right, we've seen two ways to grow in happiness. Stop living in the past and change our perspective. Now let's see one more in our time together. We must lower our expectations. We expect too much out of this life, I think. And we're confused when trials hit and we long for certain things and we finally get them and then we think, so this is what it's like to have whatever it may be? I thought it would be more awesome than this. Our problem is that we expect from stuff what we can only get from God. And that is the reason so many people live empty lives. C.S. Lewis said it this way, if we find ourselves with the desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. So here's our final discussion time. When were you the happiest in your entire life? And why was that true? Which of today's three steps to true happiness is the most pertinent to your life right now? Discuss those questions, and I think it will bring blessing to you.